Welcome to the Genealogy Gems Podcast, providing quick and innovative ways to make the absolute most out of your research time and creative ideas for sharing and displaying your family history. I'm your host, Lisa Louise Cook. Hello and welcome to episode number 96 of the Genealogy Gems Podcast. Wow, 96 podcast episodes. <laughs> Who knew there was so much to say? Well, actually, I did. I don't get tired of talking about genealogy. And, and listener Denise Coughlin posted on my Facebook wall the other day, and she said, I realized as I'm filling up my MP3 player for the rest of the work week that you and Genealogy Gems podcast are about to be 100. Congrats and keep coming. That's right, we are going to hit 100 and probably in October of 2010, um, which seems very appropriate since October is Family History Month. Hmm, we will have to think of some ways to celebrate. I know one way. Do you know what I would love? I would love to hear from you. You know that we have a voicemail line. Uh, It's 925-272-4021. And if you enjoy the show, have learned something from it, have been inspired to do something because of it, or you just listen to it because that's all you have on your iPod, I would love to hear from you. Call the line, leave a quick voicemail message, and we'll play them on the 100th episode. How about that? We can sort of have a virtual birthday party for the podcast. Ooh, this could be fun. Okay, so you have your birthday party invitation. Now you just need to show up. So call the line, 925 272 4021, leave your voicemail, or you could even send me an MP3 audio file with a recorded message if you have a way to record on your computer or with a digital recorder. That would work. Send them on over to me. Um, This should be a lot of fun. That would be great. And speaking of fun, I have been having a ton of fun putting the finishing touches on the new Google Earth for Genealogy Volume 2 DVD. Um, This one is going to have even more video than Volume 1 did, and it's going to include downloadable content to help you create the projects that I demonstrate on the DVD. You're going to have everything you need. Um, I'm including some of the newest Google Earth techniques and bringing them together with genealogy, and I know they work because I've had a few breakthroughs of my own just working on it, which has been great. Um, I, You know, I use my great-grandparents as my ancestor guinea pigs in this video series. And I had more than one aha moment as I was recording. You should see me jumping up from the microphone and doing my happy dance and then coming back and and working on the DVD. Um, And it looks like, I'm so glad about this, we're going to have a way for Mac users to be able to use both DVDs, actually. Um, So stay tuned. I'll have more information about how Mac users can download a free program from the internet that allows you then to access the files and watch the videos on both the DVDs, Volume 1 and Volume 2. So stay tuned. It's coming. Um, I'm still targeting October 1st so that you can kick off Family History Month by rocking your ancestors' world with Google Earth. And if you don't have your copy of Volume 1, you can grab that over at googleforgenealogy.com or head to um, genealogygems.com and go to the store page and you'll find information there. Something else I have been up to is I was recently interviewed by Marion Vermazen. Um, she's a listener of the podcast and has her own interview show called the Marion Vermazen Podcast, aptly enough. Um, she dropped me a line and asked if I would be a guest and it was a lot of fun. She asked some great questions and we had a really good time. So if you want to check that out, uh, listen to the interview, you can find it on Marion's podcast. Uh, It's in iTunes. Just simply do a search on Vermazen. It's V like Victor, E-R-M-A-Z, like zebra, E-N. And I will have a link directly to the episode that features the interview in the show notes for this episode, which is, again, number 96. Just go to genealogygems.com. Click podcast in the menu and navigate your way following the links to number 96. 
And we've got some news here from Ancestry. They just sent out a press release. It says Ancestry.com launches the largest searchable online yearbook collection that includes photos of Will Smith, Sandra Bullock, and Betty White. Oh, you got to love Betty White. (laughs) Boy, is she hot these days. Talk about starting a brand new career in your 80s. Ah, it's never too late. Um, But the the press release says here, Ancestry.com launched millions of records that now make up the largest searchable collection of yearbooks available online. Along with Ancestry.com's existing collections, there are more than 60 million yearbook records available in the site's U.S. School Yearbook Collection, which also includes class and candid photos of famous celebrities. The 10,000 yearbooks included in the new U.S. School Yearbook Collection feature yearbooks from high schools, junior highs, academies, colleges and universities, military, public, parochial, and private from almost every state in the U.S. spanning 1875 to 1988. Wow, such a variety of yearbooks. That's great. (laughs) Now, of course, they are uh, hyping this up with some featuring some celebrities that they found in yearbooks in the collection. Uh, Let's see here. Betty White says the Emmy-winning actress is experiencing a career comeback after a Facebook campaign landed her a gig as the most popular guest host on this past season of Saturday Night Live. (laughs) That's so cool. Uh, Along with her newly discovered popularity, White's fans can now share her newly discovered high school photo from Beverly Hills High School in 1936. Wow, I'm going to have to look that up. (laughs) 1936, that's awesome. Uh, they've also got here featured uh, Sandra Bullock it says to be a varsity cheerleader. The girls had to sacrifice a lot of time, money and energy appeared in the 1982 Washington Lee High School yearbook story on the Arlington, Virginia varsity cheerleaders. Oh, no surprise. She was a varsity cheerleader and uh, Bullock had no shortage of energy since Ancestry.com also discovered her high school photos from the Thespian Honor Society and the German Honor Society. Of course, she still had time to attend the homecoming dance where her dancing partner was captured trying to steal a kiss. Huh. All the things you can find on Ancestry.com, right? <laughs> and they've got here Jay Leno. The Tonight Show host was recognized early on by his classmates who named him the funniest in this candid photo of Leno in his Loyola Academy, Andover, Massachusetts, 1966 yearbook. Also noted next to his class yearbook photo, Leno listed his possible future career as retired millionaire. Oh, I think he got that right. <laughs> wow, I wonder what I put on my goal. Hmm, they didn't have podcaster back then. All right, well, the entire yearbook collection will be available on Ancestry.com to existing members, or you can uh, check it out through a free 14-day trial for new members. So we'll have a link for you on that in the show notes. And of course, we need to check in with Family Search. They've got lots of new things going on. Uh, Their most recent press release here came out on August 18th of 2010. It says 200 million more historic records see the light of day. New collections feed growing appetite of family history buffs. Yes, indeed. We have a growing appetite, don't we? (laughs) More records, please. It says here that they announced at the recent Federation of Genealogical Societies Conference, the addition of over 200 million new searchable historic records online representing 18 countries. The new records were added to the hundreds of millions Family Search published earlier this year at a similar event in Salt Lake City, Utah. The total number of records on the pilot website totals 700 million. Oh, you got to love that. It's fantastic to see the progress that they're making over there. And in fact, I'm going to pull this up. I was just reading uh, Diane Haddad's blog over at the Genealogy Insider. It's Family Tree Magazine's blog. And she posted on September 8th, which is today, actually, the day that I'm recording, major updates to Family Search beta site. Uh, let me read some of the new things they've got going here. She says that the Family Search has announced a major upgrade of its Family Search beta site. And its usefulness has already outpaced Family Search's familiar pilot records site. Uh, it's interesting. They've, they've got a couple of different ones going on. I know eventually it's all going to converge, but it's good to know that there are a couple of different places that we should be looking in terms of Family Search materials. 
She says the new features, including the following, make the beta site easier to use and nudge it closer to replacing FamilySearch.org. They have a new website address. It's beta.FamilySearch.org. New records, including all of those found at the Pilot Search site and more, and 450 plus collections. Uh, They've got alphabetizing, browsing. And if you're interested in only collections with record images, you can click all collections and then check a box on the top left to see only titles of collections that actually have images. That is a good thing to have. She says you can filter your search results by collection category. And when viewing a record, you can click to see the previous or next record image in the collection. And census results now list all household members. That is a big help. It includes also their genders and their ages. And if you're searching on trees, where the information from Family Search's ancestral file is, you can find people by event year. That is the year of their birth, death, or marriage. And for easier navigation and viewing of the site, you'll find new labels in the header and footer enhanced color contrasts, and visited links that change colors once you've already clicked them. So lots of great upgrades going on over there. Um, I'll have a link to Diane's article in the show notes. And I actually just interviewed her for the Family Tree Magazine September podcast uh, here in 2010. And so you can take a listen to that and she'll tell you more about that herself. And finally, speaking of Family Tree Magazine, I am continuing on as one of their instructors at Family Tree University. I've had such a great time uh, these last few weeks teaching the Google Tools for Genealogist class. And also I've been teaching reverse genealogy, uh, which is one of my favorite topics. Um, Yes, I do think about things besides Google. (laughs) Um, I love doing reverse genealogy. That class really incorporates a lot of great techniques for how to get around those brick walls, you know, that we have, and um, that sometimes when you get stuck at the wall, you kind of need to throw it into reverse. So that's what we do in that class. And there is another session coming up. So if you are interested, it's coming up here soon. Uh, Reverse genealogy, working forward to break down brick walls. The class begins September 13th of 2010. Uh, Classes run four weeks through October 10th. Wow, 10, 10, 10. (laughs) I just noticed that. Okay, so it's a four week class. There's tons of information there, not only, you know, my class curriculum, but we also supplement it with um, digital downloads of articles that coordinate with the class. And of course, we have our message forum where the students can get together and chat. And of course, you've got access to me um, personally as your instructor. So we talk online and I can give you feedback on, on the exercises that you do and answer your questions make sure that you're really able to throw it into reverse and get some good things done there. So would love to see you in class. It's starting at well, it's that time of year, isn't it? Fall of 2010. Um, And also keep keep an eye on the Family Tree University class. I know fall can be a busy time. But there will also be classes coming up right after the first of the year. And I know with me that uh, January through March time is a great time to get some of those kinds of projects and classes done because things finally kind of quiet down after the holidays. Um, But this class coming up in September will be wrapped up before the middle of October. So you will be good to go. Either way, we'd love to see you in class. Just head over to FamilyTreeUniversity.com and you can find more info. And uh, I'll put a link in the show notes that gives you a listing of my classes as well because I would love to work with you. That'd be fun. Well, that's what's new with me here. So um, let's check in with you. And we will do that at the mailbox. Well, I've got lots of great emails here and Facebook posts in the mailbox. Um, Let's see, last episode, I believe we were talking about scanners. A listener had written in and asked for some recommendations on scanners. And Gus Marsh wrote in, he says, like you, I had over 50 carousels of 35 millimeter slides. I'm currently down to about nine. Good job. He says, I am putting all of my slides on CDs and mailing them out to cousins and others. I use a Microtech USB flatbed scanner with slide attachment. Like yours, mine is about two years old, and I'm sure my model is no longer in production. But this scanner will scan both color and black and white 
and he provides the URL address. You can check it out or what the newest versions of the scanner are at Microtech. It's uh, www.microtechusa.com. And it's tech, T-E-K. So we'll have that in the show notes for you. Thank you, Gus. I appreciate that. And in fact, um, listener A.C. Ivory sent me a note, and he was recently at the Family History Expo in Sandy, Utah. And he came across a vendor in the exhibit hall that also sells scanners. It's FlipPal Mobile Scanner. And so we were talking about this on email, and I asked him, I said, oh, I'd love to hear more about it. So he's put together a post. Thank you, AC. Um, You can find it at his findmyancestor.blogspot.com website. And the post was on September 4th, 2010. Scan your genealogy documents anywhere. FlipPal sounds like it's just kind of bursting onto the scene. They were not only at the Family History Expo, but they I heard that they are coming to the Family History Expo in Pleasanton, California, which I will be at in October of this year. So I'm looking forward to seeing one of these gadgets for myself because it looks pretty amazing. Uh, he says, I was so impressed with these little scanners. He said, I must admit, when I first saw and heard about them, I was a little skeptical. I thought to myself, There is no way a little scanner that could produce such a great quality image. I have changed my mind. And he's got all the specs there for you. This scanner only weighs one pound, four and a half ounces without batteries. But it's got some great scan resolutions, um, scan speed, and it's portable. That's the key. It's portable. So we'll have a link for you to AC's article so you can check that out in the show notes. And uh, I look, like I said, I'll, I'll report back to you once I get a chance to also see one of these for myself in action. Uh, they look pretty cool. And listener Jean Pereira also chimed in on scanners. She says, I just finished listening to episode number 95, Great Information as Usual. In the mailbox, Lucy asked about a scanner. I recently purchased a handheld scanner that I love. It may not fit Lucy's needs, though it may not fit Lucy's needs. A flatbed scanner may be what she wants for her photos. However, others may find it useful. She says that she uses the Viewpoint Magic Wand scanner, and it's only about 10 inches long and very portable. She says, I can scan a book or page or anything else on a flat surface, color or black and white. 300 or 600 DPI. You need to purchase separately a micro SD card to save the scans. Then simply connect the included USB cable to the computer and download the scans. That sounds great. So far, the quality of my scans have been very good. I have scanned some photos and the quality is fine for my purposes. Originally, it was available through Bed Bath & Beyond. I went to my local store and they no longer had it in stock, but it is available online. It's also available through Amazon. And I chose the latter because it was only about $94 with free shipping. And Bed Bath & Beyond was selling it for $99 plus shipping when I last checked. Besides, Amazon helps keep your great podcast free for me to listen to. I'm going to Iowa on a research trip soon, and I look forward to using this scanner on documents I can only find there. Look forward to the next podcast. Oh, Jean, thank you so much. I appreciate that. And I really appreciate you supporting the show. I know that a lot of you do that, and I I really can't tell you how much I do appreciate it. It makes it possible for me to keep putting out the free podcast. If you do online shopping, and if you're like me now, it's After September 1st, I'm already doing Christmas shopping. (laughs) Um, But actually, I've got a lot done. So that's good because I'm going to be traveling a bit in October and I needed to get a jump start. But anything that you're looking for, whether you're looking for genealogy books or scanners or you're doing your Christmas shopping, whatever, Amazon really does carry everything. And if you go to genealogygems.tv or .com, either one, and click on the Amazon, there's actually a search box there on the front page. You can enter your search term in the box or just click the ad itself. But once you enter Amazon, any shopping that you do while you're there, all of that, we get credit for sending you there. And the nice thing is it doesn't cost you a thing to do that. So you do all your shopping, you get your free shipping, do all that great stuff, get the same great low prices. But Amazon gives us some financial credit for sending you there. And that is what helps 
keep this free show coming to you. So, Jean, I appreciate it. And I'm the scanner sounds really neat. I mean, a magic wand. We all need a magic wand, don't we? A genealogy magic wand. <laughs> oh, sorry, it's a scanner. It's just a scanner magic wand. Boy, for hitting the road, you know, there's. it seems like they're charging you more and more every time you bring any kind of luggage on the airplane. So small is good. And these sound like um, great options. So I appreciate everybody kind of chiming in, and I'll have information on this in the show notes. And uh, hopefully Lucy also will uh, find one that meets her needs. Thanks for writing in. And uh, our friend of the show, Brant Gibson, wrote in. He says, I have a question for you. My mom is interested in getting into genealogy and wants to be able to see my research online. I've thought about putting up my own tree on Ancestry or updating the tree that I have on tribalpages.com, but both of these might be too complicated for what she wants to do, which at this point is just to look at the research that I've done. I like new family searches interface, but I don't know of a way to make my tree viewable and potentially editable for her. Do you know of a way that I can make my tree open for her to view on new family search? If not, do you have another online source that you can recommend? Well, Brant, I went straight to the source over at Family Search, and that was Bryce Roper, who I met at a conference earlier this year. And Bryce got right back to me. He says, thanks for your question. I have two possible solutions for you. If Brant's mother has access to new Family Search, she could register and log in to see what Brant has been working on. New Family Search is a public tree, so she could also edit the information there. The second solution is for Brant to go to our affiliate, treeseek.com. Treeseek would go out to New Family Search, capture the information, and create a PDF pedigree chart or a fan out chart for free. It's not editable, but gives you a great visual look at the tree, and the PDF can be emailed out. So there you go, Brant. Straight from the source, it looks like uh, treeseek.com. Might want to check that out. And uh, I got a quick little note here from Karen. Now, if you've been thinking about signing up for the free Genealogy Gems newsletter, but you haven't done so yet, here's what Karen has to say. She writes, it's very good information. This is a terrific tool to have up my sleeve. I've much to learn. <laughs> so don't hesitate. Do as Karen says. Uh, head over to genealogygems.com and click the button to sign up for the free newsletter. And you'll also get a free ebook. It's on Google Search and some five great strategies for helping you with your family history research. So thank you, Karen, for writing in for that compliment. Um, I've been really having fun with the newsletter and trying to uh, get more great usable content in there. So I'm really glad that you're enjoying it. Roots Magic 4 has been completely rewritten and is now even more powerful and makes building your family tree easier than ever. I love it. With Roots Magic, you can add unlimited facts, find anyone in your database with lightning speed with Roots Magic Explorer, quickly and easily create perfectly formatted sources with the Roots Magic Source Wizard, create customized reports, and best of all, you can now take Roots Magic wherever your research takes you with the Roots Magic to go, which lets you run Roots Magic directly off your flash drive. And Roots Magic makes it a snap to share your family history, publish a book, create stunning wall charts, shareable CDs, even generate websites automatically from your data. To download your risk free trial of Roots Magic 4, head to rootsmagic.com. See why professionals and beginners alike choose Roots Magic at rootsmagic.com. Well, in this gem, I wanted to share with you, kind of as a follow-up to the mailbox, an email that I got from listener Mary Lore. She says, I finally took the plunge and I've created a blog. It's at maryjlore.wordpress.com. What took me so long? Well, I was probably just a bit too timid to begin. However, with so many genealogy thoughts rambling around in my head, a blog just seemed like the natural way to express them. Thank you for encouraging your listeners to blog. Is my blog great writing? Absolutely not. Is it fun to blog? 
Absolutely, yes. <laughs> Sincerely, Mary Lore. She's also a premium podcast member. Well, uh, I took a look at Mary's blog, and I, I just I love hearing from all of you who've been listening and you have uh, been taking my advice on blogging. I'm I'm really glad because I've heard so many wonderful stories of how people have been connecting with other researchers and other family members through their blogs, as well as inspiring other budding genealogists with your stories of success and the challenges that you face. And of course, I have the uh, video series for you, the free video series on my Genealogy Gems YouTube channel at youtube.com slash genealogy gems, where you can learn how to blog for free. And it's very quick and easy. So after getting Mary's email, I thought it'd be fun to chat with her live and give her a chance to tell you herself what genealogy blogging has meant to her. Well, I'm so proud of you for blogging. I think it's awesome that you have gone for it. And I love the one that you pointed out to me. Was this back from August 5th? Was that one of your first posts? Uh, I had a few earlier ones, but I had gone to a conference and I had talked to my friend and she had told me this story. And it just was such a human element that I wanted to include it. Exactly. Well, great. Well, I would love to have you share it with us here. Putting the great in grandparents. A recent conversation reminded me of the very human side of genealogy as seen through the eyes of a child. Dee, a cousin and friend of mine, has several grandchildren. Recently, Emily, she's five, wanted to call Dee great-grandmother since her nine-year-old cousin, Taya, was calling Dee great-grandma. Taya is a step-great-granddaughter. Emily was reminded that Dee was her grandmother, but not her great-grandmother. A follow-up phone call resulted in a direct request from Emily to call the great-grandmother. The reason? Because, Grandma, you do great things for me. Obviously, this grandmother is doing something right. Tell everybody listening the name of your blog. The name of my blog is Swans and Lower Family Roots Blog. Now, are these and both family lines of yours? Yes, yeah, Swans is my maiden name, and Laura is my married name, and so I'm doing both my husband's genealogy and mine. Does he so, share your uh, interest in genealogy? Uh, he do, He's um, very supportive. Uh, he doesn't actually do the genealogy, but he's helped me map out cemeteries. He's gone with me to things. He's very cooperative and uh, supportive and, and happy when I'm doing it. So you bet. That's good. And he asked me to do his, so once I started, I wasn't going to stop. Oh, good. Well, of course not. <laughs> It's too addictive. Yeah. Well, now I'm curious That's because right. I know you've been a premium member for a long time and you had said in your email that, you know, you've heard me talking about doing genealogy blogging. Now that you're actually doing it, what is your take on it? What's your experience been like and what do you kind of foresee in the future? Do you think you'll want to keep up with it? I do. I had all these thoughts of rambling around in my head, and the only way to get them out was to, to blog about it. And uh, at first, I was just going to make it private, but after about three days, I thought, oh, this is really fun. And as I described it, is it great writing? Well, absolutely not. But is it fun? Absolutely, yes. And so I've just taken this step, and I'm researching in Luxembourg, Liechtenstein, Germany, Ostfriesland, which is the northwest area up of Germany by Holland, and then I have Dutch roots, and my husband has Ireland and Switzerland in addition to Germany. So all these things have given me a lot of uh, different experiences, and some have been really good, and some have been, you know, frustrating, but there's always the, these thoughts that are just there, and I just had to get them out and share them, and if somebody wants to read them, that's fine, but if not, at least it, it's fun for me to record them. And it puts you out there so you never know. Somebody could be doing a search on your family or a certain person in your family, and all of a sudden your blog pops up, and they find a way to connect with you when otherwise they may not have found you. So, you know, it it definitely puts you in, in the search engines. But you know what I really liked about the approach that you took, Mary, was that your blog posts are kind of like each one's a thought. They're, they're quick and easy to read, and they're really varied because you're kind of exploring, like you said, all the different areas of your research, and you're including visuals, which I think sometimes people forget to do. You're putting pictures in there, which makes it so much more interesting. So I love it. It's like I can check in and see what you're doing, 
and oh. learn about one idea. It, it's really nice. It's it, to me, it's like sharing. It's like sharing over the picket fence. You know how we used oh, to do well, in the backyard. <laughs> That's exactly what I wanted to do. Was just some short tight writing with little snippets of, uh, well, like when I did the name tag and I ordered the put the wrong names on my genealogy tree. <laughs> I just I got that name tag and I thought, oh my word, what have I done? Great genealogy lesson. Yeah. You know, and then I lost the replacement one. But I thought those little things everybody can identify with that putting people in the wrong place. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, I think you're, all, you're putting it all in the right place now. You get, you've got it on a genealogy blog, and I wish you great success with it because I just I love when I see people putting into action some of the things that we're talking about, and I, I hope it really pays off for you. Well, thank you for your inspiration, Lisa. That, that's really helped me. I think I must have picked up on your podcast probably about two days after you turned on your recorder because uh, I just remember at first you sound like kind of tentative <laughs> and as you did about, you know, a month or two, oh my goodness, you were so excited. And so I have listened to all your regular ones and all your premium ones and I'm really enjoying them. Yeah, I remember, I think you were one of the really early people to ever yeah. um, email me and let me know that there was somebody out there listening. <laughs> it's <laughs> funny how things have changed so much. Gosh, when I started, I think podcasting itself was such a new thing. It hadn't been around very long. And it's kind of yeah. like with the blog, you know, when you finally find a medium that seems to suit you, oh, I just think it makes the genealogy that much more fun. Don't you think? That is the fun part. It, that is the fun part, Lisa. It definitely is. Well, I think that Mary is a lot of fun. Mary, thank you so much for being on the show, for reading one of your favorite posts. I love that. Of course, now being a grandma, I could very much appreciate it. And if you would like to check out Mary's new blog, uh, be a new visitor to her blog at maryjlohr.wordpress.com. Profile America, Tuesday, September 14th. Being able to take photographs easily came within the grasp of the average American this month in 1888 when George Eastman patented the first camera to use dry, flexible roll film. Before that, photographers had to use wet glass photographic plates and heavy equipment. Eastman's handheld camera, the first to use the brand name Kodak, had enough film on a roll to take 100 exposures. When the film was finished, the camera was sent back to the factory for unloading, developing, and reloading. Now most cameras are digital and Americans spend $3.2 billion a year buying cameras and equipment to continue taking pictures of friends, weddings, graduations, and travel. You can find these and more facts about America from the U.S. Census Bureau online at census.gov. Would you like to power boost your genealogy research and break through those brick walls? Well, here's your answer. Become a Genealogy Gems Premium Member. You'll get members-only episodes every month packed with great tips that you can use right away. And instructional videos walking you through the best internet tools step by step. Our current video series is Solving Your Family History Mysteries with Google Earth. And we also have Google, a gold mine of genealogy gems that helps you get the most out of Google. If you enjoy the Genealogy Gems podcast, then I promise you are going to love being a Genealogy Gems premium member. Hi, Lisa. I wanted to call and thank you for all your hard work putting together the premium membership episode. You offer the most helpful hints and find wonderful gadgets and databases to include in your premium podcast and your videos. I feel more and more confident than ever in my research. Now that I've made you my research mentor, there's no doubt in my mind that I will break down a serious brick wall one day, and it'll be thanks to you and your premium membership, which, in our ancestors' words, is worth its weight in gold. Thanks, Lisa. To become a premium member, go to my website at genealogygems.tv and click the Join Today button. Genealogy Gems Premium Membership it's where you belong. Thank you so much for joining me for episode 96 of the Genealogy Gems podcast. 
Um, before we wrap up here, I want to let you know about a couple of speaking engagements that I've got coming up and would love to see you at. Um, the first one, of course, I mentioned earlier is the Family History Expo. It's in Pleasanton, California. It's October 8th and 9th. And yes, indeed, we are going to do a live Genealogy Gems podcast episode there from the fairgrounds in Pleasanton. Go to fhexpos.com and click on the California Expo for more information. And I'll be there doing a couple of different classes as well as we will have a booth in the exhibit hall. Lacey's going to be there with me helping me out because this one's actually in my neck of the woods. So uh, we don't have to travel as far this time to attend this expo, but really looking forward to it. And also during Family History Month in October, October 23rd of 2010 from 9 a.m., to 3.30 p.m. It is going to be an all-day affair at the Hemet San Jacinto Genealogical Society Seminar. Carrie Bartles will be there speaking on the National Archives at Paris, California, and the many facets of the National Archives website. And I will be presenting What You Must Know to Save Your Research from Destruction, as well as Solving Family Tree Mysteries with Google Earth. That's going to be held at the Hemet Library, and you can pre-register at hsjgs.org by October 13th. And finally, another big seminar coming in up in uh, October is at the California Genealogical Society. It's a full-day seminar we are doing called Google All the Way. I will be there in Oakland doing four sessions on Google we are going to have a Google Fest. (laughs) It's going to be so much fun. It's going to be held on October 30th of 2010. And for more information, head over to the CaliforniaAncestors.org website. Go over to the calendar section, scroll down to October 30th, and you'll find links there as well as links in the show notes for this episode for more information. The flyer with all the details on what's going to be happening and also the registration form. Now, I posted about some of these presentations on Facebook, and I heard from several people saying, oh, I wish you were coming to my neck of the woods. Well, I am going to be doing more traveling in 2011, but if you would like me to come to your location, perhaps you are with a genealogy society or historical society, would love to hear from you. You can head over to genealogygems.com and click the seminars link there in the menu and lots of information about the classes that I can offer. My bio is there, all that good stuff. Would love to come out and speak to your organization. And if having a speaker come all the way out to where you are, it isn't always feasible. I do do webinars. So we could do a little uh, virtual presentation if you want to. And of course, just email me at Genealogy Gems Podcast for more information. I'd love to come out and meet you all in person or virtually over the web. Well, that's it from here. So thank you so much for listening, friend. I'll talk to you soon.